Hello everyone, today I'm sharing with you a project I've been making and this is a bolster cushion. I wanted to make it in a cottage kind of style with pretty, pretty colours, something to brighten up my day and I was going through my Crafty Me stuff, laces and trims and I found this beautiful collar piece that I was sent as part of my design team kit and it has pearls and it has rhinestones and I know it's rather glamorous for a cottage style but that's nice, I like that. Adds a little bit of glitz and glam. I have also used this beautiful floral trim and it has like a mint green and a soft peachy pink floral design on it which I've put at either end. The actual bolster cushion is made from a napkin and it's a linen napkin. You may, um, it, it's this kind, this is the edge of it. It has this uh, like an embroidered edge in a coffee colour down the side and some embroidery work so I've just used a couple of those to make the actual cu cushion cover. This centerpiece here is some curtaining I found, or it could be curtaining, feels like curtaining, in um, a thrifting quite some time ago. And this is the actual fabric. It is translucent, um, but it's very pretty colours, although I did find it just a little bit bright for what I wanted. So I've just put two layers of tulle over the top, you can see of that fabric there and I've gone around the edge of it there with this lovely little trim and it also has a little bit of sparkle going through it as well and it's got the peachy pinks in it as well. Uh, around the edge of it I've used the lovely gathered or pleated trim from Esme's stores and I do believe I may have tea stained this when I got it so it wasn't quite so bright um, so it has a softer look so that's what I've done around the edge there this is all hand stitched on um, around the edge here I have this beautiful lace I'll just try and straighten a bit for you that is also tea stained to try and give it a pink tinge to go with everything else down the bottom here is the decoration. I've made a flower out of the same fabric that I had. I've put some pearls and ribbon in the center. Just a couple of applique pieces that I had and they were from Lynn Harris. Thank you Lynn. A couple of lace flowers that I've made and also just I've cut up a little bit of this beautiful trim here from Crafty Me Shop and it's in the palest of pinks and I've just popped a little bit that of that down the bottom along with this beautiful beaded sequin trim that also comes from Crafty Me Shop um, but they were the last three little pieces I had of that and I think that may be tea stained also. Um, that is it for the front of the cushion and then for either end I have just used show you what it is. It's part of a, a little girl's dress and it's actually made up of white, mint and pink, this uh, peachy pink um, gros grain ribbon and I cut it up a little while ago now and I've used some of that just to make the ends of either side of the bolster cushion. Now the actual insert is just some wadding rolled up and I haven't got quite enough of it so although you see a bit of a wrinkle here once I can get to the shops again and get myself some more wadding, I will make that a bit fatter and it will fill the cushion up a lot better. But as you can see, that's all I had. So I'm working with what I've got at the moment. It will be fine until I get some more and um, then I'll fill it up and those little wrinkles will disappear. I've also used a few little um, fabric flowers underneath here to fill it up a little bit and they were from Gail who is father of four. Thank you Gail and a little bit of silk ribbon on the ends there to tie it up and I'm going to just have a quick how-to of how I made uh, 
you know how to make a bolster obviously it's not going to be this particular one but I thought people might be curious on how I actually made a bolster cushion so I'm just going to make a miniature one and show you how I do that um, and then you can decorate it any way you want and you can make it any size you want so I hope you like what I've made um, as I said, the beautiful laces and the beautiful collar piece and ruffles and lace here and the applique all come from Crafty Me Shop on Facebook. Esme does a live sale, usually a live sale, once a week and that is on a Friday in America. It is on a Saturday my time. I actually got to partake in one last Saturday and it... <laughs> <laughs> it went for so long I was amazed I was there in the morning and then I had to leave and I had to go do my grocery shopping which took a couple of hours and when I got back and put everything away it was still going but I think that it was extra long because of the way she was doing some of the things and and she was by herself doing it so it was just um it was wonderful actually it was wonderful she had some beautiful beautiful things and I did order a few things so that's exciting too but I'll put a link to Esme's store in the description box below um, you do have to ask to join the group and if you go to the Facebook page and it says closed that just means there's no sale on right now you can still um, you can still apply to join the group so don't let that deter you or anything so I hope you like this I'll show you a couple more pictures of it at the end of this video after the little tutorial so take care everybody and thank you so much for watching bye okay so what I've got here is a piece of cotton fabric it was actually off a, um, a chair back cover actually uh, I've just taken it apart like there's the chair back cover there this part here was down the bottom there I think there was another little bit actually in the middle yep here we go that one was there and along the bottom edge was a piece of blue fabric so I took the blue fabric off and I just wanted this little motif it's absolutely gorgeous isn't it and it's puffy it's really beautiful and I thought I'd make a little roll with that so I'm going to be using some some of this also uh, let's have a look okay we could use this piece here I just and you can make these any size you want absolutely any size you want um, like I said before I'm only doing mine in miniature I just I don't want that little edge on there okay so that's going to be our roll we want to be cutting this in half I'm just guessing at the moment okay so we need one for each edge of our piece of fabric and I've cut this piece of fabric so it will cover something about this big this is just tacked together it's just a little bit of um, quilting fabric I'm using this as a guide so when I put this on here that will fit in there it has a little bit of overhang on each end to create my seam and the same here about the same amount there see that probably about a centimeter what's that about I don't know what a centimeter is it's over a quarter of an inch but a seam allowance that's what you want to leave you want to leave enough fabric so you've got enough for a seam allowance on each end and on the edge as well okay and then what you need to do is have your two side pieces your two side pieces need to be wide enough that you've got a seam allowance going over the edge there 
it comes to the middle and you've got these, I wonder if these are big enough, enough to go back like that to create a little, um, what do they call those, just a little fold so you can thread some ribbon through and pull it tight. So this is only tiny. The bigger, of course, the the bigger the cushion you're making, the bigger the pocket, you're, oh, there's a name for that, the bigger the pocket piece to thread your ribbon through so it's nice and sturdy. Um, like on the bolster cushion I made, I made one that wide because I had some thicker ribbon going through it and I wanted it to be, you know, nice and strong. This is only really tiny, so I just need, that's probably uh, three quarters of an inch, probably one and a half centimetres wide. So you'll see what I mean. First of all, I'm going to attach that side there and because they're both the same on both sides I don't have to worry too much but what you would do is put right sides together so I'm putting one there and I'm also putting one here and I'm going to sew down both sides there like that and then I'll be back okay so now that's done, what I did forget to tell you was that if you wanted to insert some lace in there or some piping or anything like that, that is when you would do it. You would sandwich it and then sew that part on so that when you opened it up like that, you would have your little fluffy bits coming out there. You would, it's probably also easier to do all your decorations on your bolster cushion while it's in this flat stage before you create the curve of it. Okay, so now we are going to... Okay, now we're going to fold it in half like that and you want to be getting your seams together And just pin them. Oh, I bought these pins before everything closed down. Just that they were only cheap, and oh, it doesn't pay to buy cheap pins because these just aren't sharp at all. They're they're really quite terrible, to be honest. So there we go. Sometimes they work, sometimes they don't. Okay, that looks about right. That side looks a little bit crooked there, so I might just even that up a bit okay see what I made terribly blunt right okay so we have a small seam here and this part, part here will be like fold it over about that far. So what I'm going to do is actually put a pin. I'm going to start the seam there and I'm going to end it there. Uh, let me just, I'll get a pencil and mark that to show you. About there and there. Like that. So I'm just going to do a straight seam all the way across like that and then I'll be back. Okay so I have stopped my seam there about halfway along like that. Okay now what I need to do is kind of open this seam up a bit like that. Of course, you know, if you wanted to do this more professionally, you will edge all the edges in, either a zigzag or on an overlocker or something like this. But I'm just showing you how I made the bolster cushion. Okay, so there's our little gap at that end there. We've opened it up. What I did was I stitched down, across and up 
on both ends of that. I'll show you. Okay, can you see how I've done that? I've gone down one side, across and up the other and I've done that on both ends. And now what I can do, I can turn it the other way if I want. It doesn't really matter whether you turn it the right way or not at the moment. Um, we want to be folding these over. I could have done it the other way, it would have been easier. Ugh, I will. And just for the sake of showing you, it doesn't matter if you get the top stitch on top, I guess. Um, because it ends up gathered up, you don't really notice it anyway. So now you want to be folding that over. It's almost halfway, actually. If you made it a bit longer, you could kind of really make it neat um, and fold it over this seam here as well and then it would be all enclosed but I just want a little pocket for my ribbon so okay so let's see if we got some pins that are going to work here just pinning that making it even all the way around I could probably pin it that way easier and then back to the beginning, like that. We'll put that like that as well. And what I want to be doing is stitching about a quarter of an inch up. So I've got a nice little pocket around the top there, and I've got a seam about there. And I want to be doing that on both both sides and the way you can do that you see you want that opening in there um, is by putting it under your sewing machine like that and measuring where you want it and just feeding it under your machine like that until you get to the other end being careful not to catch anything underneath of it so that's that side and I'll do exactly the same thing for this side here folding it over, same amount, oh, looks about right, they're starting to open the shops up a bit now, I noticed the other day I had to go over and see my mother, my father, I had to go over and see my mother um, and there were a lot more cars on the road. so But that's not all over Australia. That's We're in Queensland here and we're allowed out and about. <laughs> uh, okay, so I'm going to go and sew that. And okay, so let's just push that through. And you should have a little gap where you've... Um, oh, did I miss that stitching a bit? did I might need to run the sewing machine over there a bit more yes anyway you should have a little gap on either end where you can in this case it's very small because I only want a small ribbon where you can thread your ribbon through and just let me fix that we don't want that like that <laughs> Okay, so that's done. So I've got a little, I better find myself a bit of ribbon as well. Uh, I think I'll just use seam binding for this. So I, uh, I got a little bit of grey. That will be alright, I think. Uh, have I got any blue? Oh, God, it's the wrong blue. What's that? No. Okay, we'll use a bit of grey. Uh. Once again, using a bodkin. Just feed it through. Pull it down like that, and you can ease a 
carefully just thread it through. You know, sometimes making smaller things is not easier or quicker than making big things. They can end up a little bit fiddlier than a larger thing. Because there's not much room. Come on. There we go. Got it through. So I'm going to uh, just pull that through a bit. Cut off enough so I can tie a bow. And then do the same on the other end. There we go. Okay. All right. So there's our little bolster cover. Now this is meant to mimic a pillow. Um, I will probably replace that with some stuffing because I can use this like a little pin cushion. I don't think this particular quilting fabric would be good for that because it just it I don't I don't know it might be. I'll have to have a look. Okay, so we've got our little cushion inside and then all we have to do is pull the ends like this and tie them into a bow. Let's just make ourselves a little bow on each end. Of course with the bigger cushion you'd use a different kind of ribbon, probably a bigger ribbon. This one's only little because this is little. You don't even have to have ribbon. You could just have it um, and tuck it inside so it's not noticeable at all. Okay, but you get the general idea there, don't you? And there's our little cushion. I wonder if it will. Probably won't work as a pin cushion because it... Depends how sharp the pins are, I guess. Plus, you would have to be careful not to have anything too long. Like, you wouldn't want to have a long needle like that in there because it might come through the other end. If you were, you would have to put it on something or put something solid inside. Um, but, you know, that might work. But that's how I make the little... Um, bolster cushions. They're really quite simple to make. It's the decoration of them beforehand. I've just used this to give you an example of where a decoration might go. Um, and like I said, you put lace around the edge in that seam or piping or anything like that. And there we go. Or if you just want something decorative, you make your basic cushion cover like this then you can glue all your stuff on if you want to. Um, bolster cushions, they don't really get very dirty because you don't use them, the, the decorative ones. They're only there uh, for looking pretty. I sewed all mine, so I could wash mine. Technically, I could put it on a gentle wash in the washing machine. If I wash it, though, I'll probably wash it by hand because it has got all those pearls and things on. But it is washable because it's all stitched. But if you're not wanting anything washable, then by all means, get your hot glue out and start gluing. So I hope you found this um, informative and helpful. 
and I wonder if I'll use that as a pin cushion. Maybe, maybe not. We'll see. Okay, take care, everybody. Bye.